Hi everyone. Happy to be with you again um, for this live session. I'm a little late again this week because um, my car broke down and yesterday I had to go fetch it and the day before I had some appointments and before that on Monday where I usually do the live um, I was away. A very nice um, weekend sort of um, overflowing on the Monday. So I decided not to um, be too late on the live session because I had promised I would do one on swearing, but I would do it today. So happy to be with you. Um, so today's topic is swear words and how to deal with them. This topic was actually um, suggested by one of our group members who um, yeah, suggested that I, that I do one. She did write a little comment and I will read it at the end after I've given the tips so that I can sort of come back to the tips I've given um, in relation to what she asked. So swearing. This can be an issue for a lot of parents. Um, so how to deal with it? Let me start um, with a story. Um, because when she mentioned this topic, the story that came to my mind was when my son was about, I think he was about two years old, and one day we went to my parents, and um, I think I was in the kitchen, and then I heard my dad just crack out laughing, and I'm like, what's going on? So I came back, and... Apparently, my son had said these big, huge swear words, and uh, and my dad just couldn't stop laughing. And I think he couldn't stop laughing because that was not a usual thing. I mean, my son had never really um, uttered any swear words or anything that um, remotely... Um, sounded like that so so yeah our reaction were pretty much one of amusement and I kept telling my dad don't please don't laugh don't laugh but I couldn't help myself being a little sort of amused by the situation and I tried to think and see where did that come from because this, is, this was not a usual behavior for my son. So I was like, hmm, like, where could he have heard such a word? And, and what happened that, you know? So thinking back, I realized that he actually had spent the day or part of the day with his cousins the day before. So these are cousins that are older than him, I think there's like um, probably like a seven or eight age difference gap and uh, so he had spent a few hours with them and in their family swearing is pretty much accepted I would say and uh, sometimes even encouraged I would could say with um, just for the fun of it. So I was like, ah, oh, that's where it's come from. So it's, yeah, he spent the day, probably heard a whole lot of words and wanted to test it out. So this is just to show that there are a whole lot of different cultures, family cultures around swearing. We don't um, have the same idea and give the same weight to the swearing in different families. Um, just another example, in our local community we have um, a doctor who is actually renowned for his swearing. He's, he's called the swearing doctor. So um, those of you who live around here will probably know who I'm talking about. This is someone who will um, I mean, you, you go and see him for a consultation. You may know him, you may not know him, and in every sentence he's going to 
um, to tell you there's going to be at least one or two swearing words. This is how he is. And people still carry on going to him because he's a good doctor and he does a pretty damn good job. See, I just said a, a swear word um, without realizing it. So a different, yeah, d different people react differently to swearing. And I tend to be very careful with my words, but just like right now, sometimes it will just um, come out because in my family culture with my parents, yes, it was something that we didn't, we shouldn't say, but it was um, still accepted and I could still hear people um, saying swear words around me. So I think that's very important um, to know about ourselves. Um, one way I realized that is when I went to my sister's one day and my, my nephew, who is also my godson, he explained to me that in their family they had just talked about swearing and they were going to all make an effort not to be swearing anymore. So every time a member would say a swear word, then um, I remember a family that like, can be um, my sister or her husband or the children, um, they would have to do something, I can't remember what it was, it was either an action or writing something on a piece of paper or putting something in a jar, I can't remember what it was, but the thing is, it was just to um, bring attention to the, to the swearing. And I really think that usually I am careful about my words, Except that in that short period of time I was with them, like a few times, he looked at me and he said, Oh, Marraine. And I had said something I shouldn't have said. So, yes, I mean, these words just sometimes get out of our mouth and we don't even realize that we are saying them. So, in just... Different families, we can go from the spectrum where in one family it would be completely taboo and not um, allowed or accepted or um, like really um, being very rigid about it. Whereas on the other end of the spectrum, it can be like my sister-in-law's family where it's very well accepted, open, even encouraged sometimes. And most of us are somewhere in that spectrum. Um, so your kids are likely going to hear um, swear words at some point or another. It can be with friends, it can be with family, it can be like around them. So most probably you're going to have to deal with them at some point because when kids hear things, they are going to try and test it out again. And, and even, even if it's not swear words, kids usually repeat what they hear, so they will at some point um, repeat the swear words, knowing or not knowing that they are um, words that are kind of taboo. So I will give you um, four tips which I think for me helps me um, deal with that in my house and this is how also I help people deal with it um, because I think that's where um, we can make a difference. These are tips um, that will not work if you are dealing with swearing that is really established already. So, for example, with older children or um, teenagers or even like older children, but where they are already in the habit of, the, of saying swear, swear words on a regular basis, then I would probably suggest another method or another, um, some of the tips will apply, but um, for the teaching part, it would be probably different. This works better with younger children and with children who are just trying to test it out at the moment and seeing how things sort of, how people react to them. So tip number one would be to be very clear about what your family culture is about swearing. How do you feel about it? 
how um, are you at swearing or not swearing? Do you say a lot of swear words? Um, do you refrain from saying them, but they are, it's like an effort? Or do you automatically not say anything that is closely related to swearing? So it's very important to know this about you and about your family, because the clearer you are, the easier it's going to be to not confuse your kids about what is allowed and not allowed. And one thing um, that is also important when you are getting clear about your family culture around swearing is what is your partner's culture. Because a lot of time it happens that we come from a certain family culture and our partner comes from a different one. So very often like we will not utter a swear word at all, whereas our partner's family is just... Um, very current and very normal. And um, I did talk about this in the Parenting as a Team video. The aim here is not necessarily to be on the same page, but the aim is to be very clear about um, where each of a partner stands and what values they have and what, um, how they want to do things around their house. Well, not their house, like their house as a whole, but how, how they want to do things um, more their way. Because in one household, you can have different ways of doing things as long as you are clear about it. And the second step is to communicate these very clear, clearly to your children. So as long as you're clear about it and that you communicate that to your children very clearly. So that would be tip number two. So once you are very clear, it's very important that your kids, as they grow, know how you function as a family. So for example, lots of families will be, for example, very um, strict that swearing should not be done in public or with strangers, unless you're like this doctor that is in my local community, most people will be more sort of, um, if you are in the family context, it's kind of okay. Um, but whenever you go out and you are in a public place with strangers, with people you don't know very well, even with people that you know very well, there's like no swearing allowed. A lot of people will also have this rule for their household, like no swearing wherever you are. So if your kids know where they stand, then it is easier for them not to have any conflict about it. Because what I see often is parents who clearly have a family culture where it's kind of accepted, but then whenever the kid says a swear word, because they are small and because they are little, it's like, whoa, this big, you know, we shout at them and we're like, no, 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 like, this is not allowed, don't say that, and things like that. So it's very, it can be very confusing for children about what is allowed and not allowed, because um, what we are telling them, it's not what they are seeing in the family, or vice versa, like the opposite can also be true. So number one, be very clear. Number two, communicate that to your children. Number three, for me, is to watch your emotional reaction when um, our kids um, say the swear words. Obviously, with a story I told you at the very beginning where my son um, said that word and my dad laughed and I was pretty amused by it. If I was to have this reaction every single time, my child said a swear word, then I would call for more swearing. I would encourage it where this is not what I want to do. So whenever, like swearing, because it's so taboo, we usually have a strong emotional reaction to it. We might laugh, we might shout at our kids for having said those words, we might get angry, we might be shocked. So we have like this strong emotional reaction and then our action just 
um, shows that to our children. And this is not what we want because every time we have a strong emotional reaction, obviously our kids pick up on that so easily and it will become, they know that it's triggers for us. So they will use it unconsciously to tr trigger us at times where they want a reaction from us. They, they pick up on that. I mean, children are very wise that, that way. So I would say, for me, it's just best to stay neutral, to, it's okay to be a little bit, bit surprised or a little bit playful sometimes about it. I mean, um, most of the time now, all I need to do, if ever my son does say a word that I don't like, is have some big eyes, and he knows, because it's something that we've talked about a lot, or um, that I've taught him before that it was not right. So he just knows now, and will just say sorry, or will change his way um, of, of saying something or doing something um, without the, the swearing accompanying it. So, yeah, you can be a little bit playful, it depends. Um, if I would say if you have, um, if this is something that your child understands and will react to, but most of the time I would say neutral is the best. Serious if you need to, um, and on occasion a little bit playful or, or surprised. And number four would then be to teach and to reinforce um, those teachings. So. I am not a big fan of moralizing when it comes to swearing. I'm not a big fan of um, punishments when it's come to swearing. I'd rather, because when we are clear and when we have communicated that and when we don't react, then all we need to do is actually teach them and just tell them um, that it's not okay. We can, you know, we can ask them, oh, that word um, is not a pretty word. We don't like words that are not pretty words in our house. So can you say that sentence again without it in it? So they can just ask again what they were asking, um, removing that word, and, and you're like, okay, that's better. I like that. So if you are just consistent with it, um, or sometimes if you have just said the word without a sentence, you can just say, oh, that's not quite um, what we want to hear, so can you apologize? Something simple. Something they can um, act on very easily, very quickly, very simply. But remember, if you do request that in an emotional way, most of the time your child will either close off or they will not because they know that they've put you in a state um, where they are having a reaction from you. So they might not respond in the right way. But if you just tell them in a neutral way and as um, they do that, you're being consistent with it, then most of the time it's just going to disappear because they will know that that is part of your family culture and that's sort of who you are and how you function. So let me, um, I'm going to s switch to the question or to, well, to the comment that um, triggered that topic um, this time and I'm just going to um, relate that to the tips I've just said, um, hoping um, it will help the mom who wrote this or and other people too. So she said, so how do you stop a toddler from using swear words? My approach has been to remold the words into a similar sounding phrase and just confuse the context. Obviously, she doesn't know what these words mean, but she knows that they get a reaction, particularly from others who insist on spending time admonishing her and explaining that these are bad words which should not be used. My approach was to basically play down these words, but not everyone agrees. Yeah, so I like the playing down the words because it's, yeah, the more you're going to moralize, in my opinion, 
you're going to make kids ashamed of using these words, which, I mean, when they are toddlers, especially, and when they are starting to test out the limits, they don't, as, as she says, they don't even know what they mean. They just know they get a reaction. They don't even know, like, you know, why are they bad words and um, why we shouldn't be saying them. So just moralizing about it will, I think, bring more questions and, and be more sort of confusing to children um, than not doing it. Um, obviously, this person's um, extended family or a group of friends um, are not, uh, are really very strong about not saying swear words. Um, but again, explaining a, a whole lot and um, sort of um, admonishing that it's wrong, a wrong thing to do. Yeah, it's, I would, I would, like playing down, yes, I would just tell that, tell, you know, the kid, like, don't say that. This is not words that, that we say. Like, can you say that? Can you do this again without saying that? Or can you um, ask me again without saying that word? And that's about it, really, if you want to teach kids not to say it. Now, the, where I'm a bit, I wouldn't say worry. I think this is a strategy that can work. But I, where I would be a bit careful is the remolding of, um, of the words into something else. Because it can be confusing to children. And... It can only work, it's a strategy that can only work for a certain period of time. I mean, kids, they pick up very quickly things that um, we try to sort of hide from them. So very soon, she's going to figure out that what you are telling her is not actually the good or correct word. So it's not a strategy that can be used on the long term. Whereas just saying, no, let's start that again. This is not, you know, like, this is not a pretty word. We don't like not using pretty words. And that's about it. And the clearer you can be rather than confusing, I think the better children can take responsibility to actually um, say things and do things that are in line with the family values. So, I hope that helped. Um, I used to be able to see comments and people joining, but it looks like I can't anymore, or um, I don't think there might be any comments here. So, as usual, if you want to um, comment on, the, on that topic or have any questions, you can either send them to me privately or you can comment on the on the live video. Um, I will post the topic for our next um, live li a little bit later today and I'm very excited because I'm going to have a dear friend of mine um, for the live um, that is going to talk about two strategies to get your family out of a negativity trap and she's got some great great strategies to share with us so be there next Monday this time it's going to be Monday, definitely, because we've booked that time. And we are going to share these strategies with you. Um, so, in the meanwhile, have a nice end of the week and um, a nice weekend. And I will see you back again on Monday. Bye.